the wacky world of multimedia J. Howdy, folks. Well, Christmas has come a little early for me this year. I have decided to uh, take the plunge and get some form of HD camera, finally. I've been a bit of a sluggard when it comes to, or a laggard, I should say, when it comes to high-def stuff for numerous reasons. One of them being I was concerned about file size from recording in HD, and uh, the H.264 codec makes it more worth it to record stuff in 720p than standard def. So, yay me! I feel like such an idiot for not doing this earlier. But, um... Besides that, I was also concerned about high-def cameras having CMOS sensors like this one does. So uh, CMOS technology, for those of you who don't know, doesn't have a global shutter. It doesn't take the whole image in all at once. So CMOS cameras are basically souped-up webcams, and they have a, an ongoing problem with the jello effect if they're ever on a vibrating surface. So if you're, like, driving around your car recording the countryside or something like that, if the camera's vibrating too much, you'll get a little bit of jello effect, which CCD cameras, like the standard def camera that I've been using for my videos for, you know, I've been using standard def CCD cameras for years. These don't have this problem. So I'll keep my, uh, I'll keep my standard def camera around in case I ever want to do something like that where the jello effect is messing me up too much. Anyways, what we have here is a Sony HDR C6 210, does full HD 1080p, but I, I'm probably just going to use it for 720 at this point. Just to start, I might do a 1080p nature video at some point where there's some real eye candy to behold. I really shouldn't film these videos after having supper, but anyways, yeah, so, um, yeah, so I'm what I'm looking at doing here is uh, probably just doing 720p, because uh, 720 is, 720 is the most, uh, is now the most efficient when it comes to compression and disk space and stuff like that, and upload time on YouTube and things along those lines. Yeah, it's kind of funny how this turned out. You know, it's more worth it for me to take standard def footage and crunch it in 720p H.264 than it is to use even the MPEG optimizer that my Corel Video Studio programs, even the latest version of it, offers. So it's time to have the hardware match the software, since it's now more worth it to do 720 footage than 480 footage. Let's get a camera that can do some 720. And this is what I have today, the uh, Sony HDR CX210 Silver model, because Sony, in their infinite wisdom, decided to do one box fits all, and a cute picture of a mommy and her little baby off to the side. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, that's right, mommies of the world. Uh, keep this camera away from your kid that might spit up all over the lens. No, just kidding. <laughs> I've uh, known more than a few disgruntled mothers of very young children who've had that kind of stuff happen. Okay, manuals, warranties, and all kinds of stuff that nobody ever reads, except nerds like me. I'm, but I'm sure you don't want to see that on YouTube. Let's get to the goods here. Nicely wrapped. Nicely wrapped. We have similar stuff to my last uh, camera. Ooh. Hey, check this out. An actual HD power plug, which probably means there's a brick in here somewhere. Gee, how'd I guess? <laughs> what else do we have for cables? A pathetic excuse for an AV cable. Oh, of course, all red, white, yellow composite cables are pathetic excuses for AV cables. Let me guess, USB... Ooh, what's this? Ooh, HDMI type stuff. Oh, well, this is high def, so uh, some kind of like little tiny HDMI to full-size HDMI, obviously for hooking up to a television. A battery, of course. I hope the camera comes with a battery. <laughs> what do we got over here? USB extender thingamabob, because there's some little tiny like one-inch USB thingy. And what do we got? How similar is it to the camera that it's replacing? Of course, I uh, just, uh, get it out of its little bag thing here. I kind of had to help it. Oh, dropping it already. Thank goodness I have a carpeted floor here. And, okay, here it is. Hopefully it survived its first little drop. 5.3 megapixel still image. So, in the year 2013, digital camcorders have finally caught up to the to the very first digital camera I ever owned way back in 2005. It actually looks a little smaller than, uh, it actually looks just a tad bit smaller than my, uh, than my current camera. Actually, you know, I'll take a still photo, and I'll take a still photo with the lovely 5.3 megapixel still camera <laughs> and take it for a spin. All right, let's put the battery in, see how much charge is on this thing from the factory. Plus 200 stupid points. 
Um, how exactly did I intend on taking a picture of a brand new camera and my old camera with the still camera functions on the new camera? Duh! Ah. Yeah, sometimes I kind of mess up when I'm winging it like this, with this no script video blog type whatever type video type YouTube stuff. Anyways, regular digital camera to the rescue. I've got that picture taken now. Yay. All right. Let's see how much charge is on this thing. Now, if this thing works the way that the last one of these doodads did, and I didn't kill it by having it take a dive to the carpet, go to such and such Sony dot something or another. Uh, it's not starting up automatically. Do I have a, uh, hmm, for your PC software, <laughs> like I need PC software, I'm just going to put a card in this thing. I'm getting absolutely no response. I hope I didn't just kill the camera. <laughs> Either that, or for the first time in quite some time, for the first time in quite some time, this I, this thing actually has no charge on it from the factory. Nothing! Is there a power button somewhere that I don't know about? Uh, we had HDMI out, we had USB, and uh, we had a tripod thingamabob and a thing to pop out the battery. Huh. Let's hook up the AC brick. Okay, handy that. This thing actually, um... This thing actually does take the same kind of power brick as the uh, the last Sony camera I had, so I can just take this uh, the new power brick and set it up anywhere I want. So cool, yeah. It takes the same input DC Y. So there's some tacky design decisions on these, like this stupid plastic cover. You know, I'm having flashbacks to some Canon digital cameras from a couple of years ago that had this awful plastic cover that broke at like absolutely nothing. And unlike my standard, the standard def version of the camera, uh, the stand, this thing's standard def cousin, which is also a year older, by the way, you actually have to manually open and close the lens. Not a good sign. A little some cheesy design decisions. But now this thing's actually got some power to it. Hmm. Still won't. Oh, there it goes. Okay, it takes a while to boot up. Uh, so does this. So let's see. Uh, <laughs> this is gonna be like the ultimate camcorder let's play here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Quite literally, because we're Let's Playing the Camcorder. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Let's Play New Sony Camcorder Thingy. Alright, so, English. English. <laughs> uh, English. I don't want a fat finger. Oh, you have to hit next. Yeah, next. Cool. Oh, yeah, New York, Bogota. <laughs> I'm somewhere between New York and Bogota. No. <laughs> Daylight Savings is currently turned off here in the lovely uh, place, New England, due to time and day display, da da da, M English D Y, um, uh, what? Oh, it's like September or something. Uh, yeah, we'll go with that by default. I don't ever know. January 1st, 2012. Whoop de freaking do. This thing will reset every time I charge it, anyways. I'll change it up later. Alright, is he going to gripe at me because the lens cover might be closed? Check the cover! It's alive! And it's immediately going into macro mode. Oh, look at all that detail. Ooh, zoom out, zoom out! Look at all that high-def detail that you can't see because I'm still using the, the, the SD camcorder. <laughs> Worth noting, too, the extended zoom on this high-def thing is nowhere near as, as powerful as the extended zoom on the other device. Okay. Okay, alright, so uh, let's get some charge on this thing and let's have a look at some stuff here. Now that it's in nice uh, HD, you'll be able to see uh, all the dust that's on everything now. I don't know. Much. Okay, let's give this a little bit of charge and then do some playing with it. Alright, we're trying this thing out in auto mode first. Yay! Standard def and regular digital camera. Zoom out, and I can see everything in HD now. You can see the dust on that thing. See the dust on the piano, dust on the crap book. Wrinkles on any people, and you can see that in auto mode. Oh, this looks a little bit pinkish reddish and stuff. Yeah, um, hmm. What if I can do some things about that with the white balance and stuff like that? Let's see what kind of white balance settings it has. All right, here's piano. That's outdoor, which makes it even redder. Ah! <laughs> Indoor, you know, it actually makes it a little bit better. Um, but, um, it's better that this is beige type color instead of off yellow or something. Uh, but that's largely because of the lights. And of course we have the white balance doodad thing. So it's one push mode, so we just aim it at something white. Uh, uh, we aim it at something white. Um, I think this will work. Uh, hold it down. 
Yeah, that's right. You actually have to stop the recording and stuff, but I white balance this and whoa, <laughs> everything is blue. <laughs> I wonder what I look like with this. Um, hmm. Not too bad. I might actually um I might actually use this for white balancing and stuff. It doesn't make doesn't make me look too blue, does it? That does a pretty good job of getting rid of some of the uh the beige colored stuff and whatnot of uh the stuff in this place. It makes it look more white than beige, or am I getting thrown off because I got the sunglasses on? Okay, how about a proper HD uh introduction with a standard indoor white balance setting instead? Ta-da! Howdy, folks. Well, now you can see my ugly face in HD. So, yeah, I'd say, uh, well, it looks kind of... Is this because I'm wearing the glasses or something like that? Uh, yeah, you're going to see all... You can actually see the stuff in my forehead? No, just kidding. I know a lot of you folks probably don't watch a lot of what I do on here in HD anyways. Actually, you know, looking through these glasses at what I'm seeing on this screen, it looks like I'm cel-shaded or something like that. So, I don't, I don't know. I'm going to play with this thing a little more. I've got the white balance set to indoor, so I'm not totally red, but I'm serious. It looks like, you know, like Skyward Sword or something like that. Or, <laughs> I don't know. So, where do we go from here? Well, obviously, the uh, the other camera is going to be used now for you know, charging batteries, and if I need a CCD for something, like if, it's, if there's too much vibration for CMOS. But uh, it's good to have a backup camera, though, that is not this thing. Because last time I had a camera fail, I went back to having to use this thing's video function. This thing is circa 2007. So, it'll be good. And also, something else I've noticed is that the Samsung camera might actually be saveable. Uh, I'm actually, one of the projects that I'm thinking of doing in terms of like uh, tweaking stuff or messing around with electronics, one of the things I'm thinking of doing is trying to find a way to clean the soup residue because the camera still works. It, I thought it was done for, but I, I fired it up a couple of days after it fell in the drink and it worked for whatever reason. It just looks really ugly because there's soup residue all over everything. Now, I wasn't exactly the biggest fan in the world of that Samsung camera. There were a few little issues with it in terms of technical stuff, like the resolution that it recorded in was non-standard, the microphone wasn't all that great, and yeah, it just wasn't all that wasn't all that good of a camera, but you know, it'd be cool if I could save it, you know, sh show that I have still have a little bit of electronic street cred these days, but I'm liking how I look in the viewfinder on this thing, but of course, I've been a fan of Sony cameras ever since this thing first impressed me, and it still does, actually. There's one thing this thing does that this new camera doesn't, and I'm very disappointed that it doesn't. Boom! Everything opens up just by opening the side panel. I'm going to have to actually remember to flip open the lens cover again. Man, Sony, what is it with these companies doing these stupid little things in their product designs, you know? It's kind of like the stuff I'm hearing about the controller on the Xbox One, but that's another discussion for another day. You know, if you have Earth to electronics manufacturers, when you stumble upon something that works, stick with it. The old phrase, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, means something. Anyways, I gotta do some, uh, well, I'm looking forward to do whatever I can do with this camera, so it's definitely, it looks pretty nice, at least on the viewfinder. I guess the moment of truth will be when I pop this sucker up on full screen or something like that. So, okay, finally at least 720 for the camera footage. I might go 1080 at some point, but what I've found out so far, what I'm finding out is that 1080 H.264 is about the same ridiculous size as the, uh, it's about the same size as the old MPEG-2s were, so roughly double the size, actually. So I'm very impressed with H.264 and how how competent it is at recording at recording at um, 720. 1080 takes up a little more space. I might save that for, like, beautiful nature videos or something like that. All right, so finally in HD after all these years. Y'all can stop calling me Mr. Backwards now. It's, uh... And on some of you folks probably be oh, we can see your ugly face in HD now. That ain't an improvement. What are you, what are you going to do? I mean, it's not like I'm going to start wearing makeup or anything like folks on TV do. Anyways, till next time, this is Multimedia J signing off. Thanks for stopping by.